Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a Pro Wrestling Archives exclusive episode where we are going to highlight some professional wrestlers that we got to talk about, man, because seeing what's going on today, no disrespect, uh, I'm, I'm liking it, like I'm liking AEW and stuff like that, um, I got to say... I gotta talk about some of the classics, man. We got we gotta we gotta make these names be remembered in the world of professional wrestling. Uh, first off, Psycho Sid Vicious, Sid Vicious, aka Sid Justice. Yo, this brother is crazy with it, man. I remember watching him as a kid, and um, I remember just like, you know, him just choke slamming people and fucking power bombing people, and it was like the first time I ever saw that stuff, man. Like I never saw a power bomb before Sid Vicious. There may have been people that have done that, but I really can't remember it because every time he would go for the finish, you would just see a high impact move like that, and you never knew if it was gonna bust someone up or not. And that was just, you know, one of the most, uh, what's the word? Is it innovative or is it powerful moves of that time? And, um, you know, when, <laughs> so when I was watching the Horsemen back in the day, um, you know, I caught some WCW shit. I wasn't like, you know, a, like a diehard WCW fan in like 89, 90, but, uh, I, I did have some action figures. So I would always check in on like, uh, the Saturday show. I forget what that show was called, but like, I remember seeing Brian Pillman on there and Flair and Sid and Arn Anderson and shit like that. Um, but when Sid came over from WCW to WWF and he came in as Sid Justice, it was so crazy because I was a fan of his before he came over and to see him be utilized as a face was so shocking and it could have been so epic. Like they could have turned him into like a Hogan or something like that. But for whatever reason, it didn't pan out that way. I mean, they ended up turning him heel and doing his thing, but it just made him kind of look like a, like, a, like a sour guy or a sour grumpy guy or something, man. It didn't really showcase... You know, like the way he was in ECW. Like in ECW, he would come in and just throw people around. And, and you know, he was able to utilize a different kind of look in ECW that I thought was very, you know, uh, southwest of him. You know what I'm saying? Like, wait, 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 how do I say this, man? The vest and the, uh, you know, the belt buckle, John, that John's like... You know, like when Pillman came in there, it was like this like weird kind of look that you wouldn't normally see in a Philadelphia ring. Um, but I remember seeing Sid come out. I, I, <laughs> I was a fan of his, man. So when he came back to the WWF in 95, 96 era, um, I remember, you know, they were calling him Psycho Sid and they were doing something with him. But like they just never got him to the point of like, let's say like The Undertaker. I don't know what it was, but... Sid was the fucking man back in the day. And then um, I remember when he came back to WCW and he broke his leg and shit like that. And that was vicious because he, he, was, he was getting pushed pretty high up at that point. And I, I believe it was because of his relationship with Kevin Sullivan. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's really fucking interesting to see, like, what could have been a Sid. You know, he was one of those guys, man. That's what I'm saying. Um, I'm going to go down this list a little bit. And I'm just going to name a couple guys, man. I, I'm trying to link all these guys in together instead of doing individual shows on each of them. But they all deserve individual shows. But I think that this will be more interesting. Um, the Dynamite Kid. Imagine the Dynamite Kid versus Sid. That would have been a crazy-ass match. Um, you know, people talk about chemistry in pro wrestling and stuff like that. But it, it's kind of interesting when you see guys... Like, here's one. I forgot to mention this during the Sid section. Um... Sid versus Dr. Death Steve Williams at that UWF show. Um, that was something else, man. You know, like to see them put on a match like that, you would have never thought that. But seeing that book, it, it was very interesting, man. Two very, very powerful guys, man. Um, going right down that list, though. Dynamite Kid, uh, one of the greatest wrestlers in the history of the, of, of the wrestling world. Uh, no one could really match his style the way that he did it. There was plenty of guys that came after him, like Benoit, and, uh, you know, even like a Taz, you know, in certain ways, the way he would kind of suplex people and shit. Um, Dynamite Kid was probably the most exciting wrestler I watched growing up. When I saw Survivor Series 87, two guys stood out to me, and those two guys were the Dynamite Kid and the motherfucking one-man gang. All right? 
and look, I'm not complaining about the Akeem turn because I love Akeem. So don't don't get it twisted, man. I think Akeem is one of the is probably the most prophetic invention in the history of fucking sp- any kind of fucking sports entertainment. <laughs> but uh, you know, some people won't agree with me on that. But uh, you know, it's it's all right. But the one man gang was so dope too. And I don't understand why they didn't keep him around, man. There was something about that gimmick at that time. I remember watching movies and shit like that um, that would, like, mimic that kind of biker kind of gang shit in, like, 86, 87 movies from that time period. Um, You know, the one-man gang was tight as shit, dude. But, okay, so Dynamite Kid, man, um, his matches, you know, with Tiger Mask, uh, probably the greatest you know, technical wrestling matches in the history of wrestling. I don't think many people are going to argue with that. Um, I would say that Dynamite Kid in his day uh, was, you know, in, in, I don't know if it, if inventing is the right word, but he was definitely innovating high-flying wrestling in America, you know. I, I don't know what's going on over in England with that, but, you know, I know obviously what's going on in Mexico and Japan, but to, to you know, to, to see Dynamite Kid flying all across the fucking ring while throwing people around the ring, it was just it was just crazy to see, and uh, you know their style with the with, with the British flags and everything, it was dope. Uh, going down this list, my favorite wrestler in the history of pro wrestling, Mr. Perfect, Kurt Henning. Uh, we're doing this for the love of it, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Kurt Henning, probably the best athlete to ever grace the sport of professional wrestling. Um, you know, he, he 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 did it all, and he made it look good, man. Nobody took a beating like Kurt Henning. Um, nobody could actually, you know, what other finisher, you know, besides maybe the power bomb, you know, comes close to the perfect plex. I don't know. Maybe that's just my preference. I don't know. But, uh, you know, seeing Kurt do his thing from, like, you know, uh, I, I caught his run from about 88 to 92, um, and then, you know, catching him as a commentator and catching him as a manager, that was interesting. I mean, it's always good to see the guy, you know what I mean? But then um, he, when he made his comeback, uh, I, I remember that mostly in WCW, you know, when he came over and did the horseman angle, that shit was off the hook too. And then uh, seeing him pop up in the NWO with Rude and shit like that, man, you got to imagine those guys are having a fucking good-ass time together, man, on the road. Um, going down this list, none other than the ravishing one, Rick Rude. Um so many stories have come out about this guy uh, after, you know, after all the lights and screams, um, you know, Rick Rude could fuck people up. <laughs> so, um, you know, I'm just letting you guys know, man, if you want to check out any good shoot interviews and any of that stuff, watch all the stuff on Rick Rude. That dude was probably one of the toughest guys to ever fucking, you know, great, uh, walk the face of this earth. Um, that dude was vi- that dude was rugged. Um, but, you know, watching his run growing up was interesting, too. You know, uh, he was he was always he was always really good at working the crowd and doing his you know uh, male stripper thing, and like he would bring girls out from the crowd and just start making out with them and shit like that. He was fucking hysterical, man, and he pulled it off too because like like Medusa was saying this about him. She was saying that like Rude was a man's man, and that shit came across through his work. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm saying that that it came across through his work. Um, you know, I met Medusa, and I know Medusa's a very, very feminine kind of woman. And, uh, like, she, she holds very strong values with a lot of that stuff. And for her, she was saying Rick Rude was, was cool as shit, but he was, he was a man's man, you know what I mean? Um, I would say that, like, when Rick Rude appeared on all three pro wrestling major companies on the same week, that was definitely something that has has never come close to happening since so he is that far ahead of the game with knowing how to how the wrestling business works and how he could lever it leverage it to his advantage much like Brian Pillman I think Rick Rude might have even pulled it off just as well if not better and I love Brian Pillman you know what I'm saying um I think it's very interesting how Rude became an announcer in ECW, and some people didn't like it. I loved it, man. I thought he was fucking great, man. Seeing how people react to, to Rick Rude is always, is always, you know, <laughs> it's always worth the price of admission, man. 
And, uh, you know, when he came back in uh, WWF and he was doing the DX shit, I thought that that was interesting how they were using him because I would have never thought of that, you know. I used to have fucking action figures back then and book all kinds of shows, and I would have never thought to put Rick Rude in DX, but he pulled it off. Um, Rick Rude then going to WCW uh, the same night as a Monday Night Raw taping happened uh, was one of the coolest things I've ever seen in live television. And, uh... You know, Rick Rude uh, could work the mic better than anybody. So for him to actually, I mean, they they were trying to stick it to Vince, man. From what I saw, man, they were they were they were going for the knockout blow, and it's just it's just crazy that Bischoff or you know whatever happened, then Brett didn't get over the way that he could have. You know, it's just you know that was that was pretty much the end of the Monday Night Wars, if you ask me. Um, Rick Rude was like the um, you know. He was like gonna fucking he was he was like the assassin ready to just take it all down and he fucking he 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 did his job you know what I mean but then whatever kind of people behind the scenes were just not able to put Brett into a situation to leverage that in what became the biggest momentum momentum shifter in the Monday Night Wars was uh you know when Steve Austin got over. And then The Rock slammed it on home, man. He went David Robinson on him.